Can you see my thoughts? Now, wouldn't it be cool if we could make our thinking visible? Well, there is a way. There are a set of practices that students can make use of to make their thinking visible. These thinking routines guide learners' thought processes and encourage them to actively process their ideas. If you have been enjoying our content, do remember to like and subscribe. One of the thinking routines is See, Think, Wonder. Ms. Selina has explained how the See, Think, Wonder routine can help students to generate their ideas when it comes to composition. Today, I would like to introduce another thinking routine that can help students to generate ideas when faced with a new composition topic during examination. The 3 2 one Rich thinking routine helps students to discover their initial ideas, questions and understandings about a topic. Then, they are encouraged to connect them to new thinking about the topic after being exposed to new stimuli. Let's take a look at this composition topic, a treasured object. Upon looking at the topic, students should pen down three thoughts, two questions, one metaphor, simile, synony or related phrase. We will start off with our thoughts. It is important to pen this process down so that you can keep track of your ideas. To ensure that your three thoughts are useful in helping you to generate ideas for the composition, your three thoughts should be focused on the keyword or the keywords in the topic, the problem of the story, as well as the solution and consequences of the story. Looking at the topic, my three thoughts will be Treasure It must be something that cannot be replaced or expensive. The problem of the story would most probably be losing or destroying the object. The solution or consequence of the story would be getting scolded and learning a lesson or replacing the object. Now, we will go on to asking ourselves two questions. The questions can be anything that is related to the topic. These questions should not be too complicated. They should be direct and easy to answer. Another way of doing this is to highlight the guiding questions on the question paper itself. Looking at the topic, my two questions will be What is the treasured object and why is it treasured? The reason for asking questions is so that as you are writing the composition, you are aware that your story must answer these fundamental questions in order for the reader to connect the story details to the topic at hand. Last but not least, think of one metaphor, simile, synony, or related phrase. We all know that we have to mention the topic word or words throughout the composition, but we should avoid repetition if possible. Hence, it is important to come up with synonyms or related phrases to the topic. Looking at the topic, a synonym that I can think of is a prized possession. Now that we have penned down our first set of 3, 2, 1, we should move on to look at the pictures provided. This is the first picture. When looking at each picture, we should pen down our next set of 3, 2, 1. Now, your new set of 3, 2, 1 should be a continuation of your initial ideas developed from your first set of 3, 2, 1. This is to ensure that even when you're brainstorming for a story when looking at the picture, you are aware that the topic must still play a central role in the story. Looking at this picture of a gift box, my three thoughts will be 1. This present must be given by someone on a special occasion. 2. This present is the treasured object. 3. What is inside the box is for me to decide. My two questions will be Who gave the main character the present? Secondly, what is the relationship between the person and the main character? Last but not least, one related phrase that I can think of will be Knowing what was inside the gift box, I carried it gingerly as though I was carrying a carton of leaves. After forming your two sets of 3 to 1, it is time to put your ideas together and form a plot. Generally, it is the easiest to start by planning the problem of the story. Looking at the topic, the problem of the story will most probably be losing the treasured object. After the problem, we can move on to solve the problem. However, if it cannot be solved, we can move on to plan the consequence of the story. 
The solution of this story would most likely be the main character searching high and low for the treasured object but not being able to find it. As a consequence of that, the main character would be devastated and would receive an earful from his parents. Once we have that part of the story out, we can think of how the story begins and how it leads to the problem. The story can start off with describing how the main character received the treasured object on a special occasion. It could be his birthday and he received a gift in a box. Describe how he was delighted and explain why the present was special and priceless to him. As we build the story towards the problem, which is losing the treasured object, we should describe the main character as someone who was careless. His parents then advised him not to bring the treasured object out. However, he refused to listen. And there, we have a simple plot with our main ideas penned down. Of course, you don't have to choose the first picture given, nor only stick to one picture. You can apply the second set of 3 to 1 to any pictures given or another picture if you can use another to develop your ideas. For example, let's take a look at this picture. My three thoughts will be A family photo means it must be a gift from a family member. Note that this is a continuation from the picture of the present. Secondly, this family member must be very special to the main character. Thirdly, since it is in a photo frame, it means that it is protected and even if the frame breaks, it can be replaced. What is irreplaceable is the photo. Something must have happened to the photograph. Note that this is the continuation from my topic 3 to 1. My two questions will be, what destroyed the photograph? Secondly, why can't the photograph be taken again? One related phrase will be, Losing this treasured object was like losing a limb. I'm linking the picture back to the topic again. However, do take note that you should not spend too much time on developing your ideas for compositions. Generally, students should spend only 5-10 to 10 minutes to generate ideas and plot their story before writing it. To sum up, the 3 to one breach technique is to force students to dig deeper into the composition topic and breach the gap between the topic and the pictures provided. It is used mainly to guide students to pay deliberate attention to their thinking processes and gather their ideas before writing. Many students are facing mental blocks when it comes to writing compositions and some have even resorted to memorizing old compositions to make sure that they score. However, learning is a product of thinking, not memorizing. Your thinking is more powerful than you can ever imagine. All you have to do is to spend more time with your thoughts and take the time to pen them down. I hope that this short video has taught you a simple way to brainstorm for and organize your ideas when faced with a new composition question. Do try it out before writing your next composition. Thank you and I'll see you soon!